Kaushik Vinita, I want to know. I mean, there was a time when both of you actually met, and uh, of course, it's more of a backstory which I wish to know about uh, the two of you meeting and then uh, starting dating, uh, dating, and then got married and then started sugar. I'll let Kaushik answer it because he doesn't agree with my version of the story. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> so just a caveat: some of the answers may be a little different. We can go with whichever makes a better read, <laughs> but. Uh, Oh wow! Already we are okay. So uh, first question was yeah. So we met uh, in business school, and uh, we were actually not in the same uh, batch. So uh, I was there in IMA between two thousand six and eight, mm-hmm. and um, I believe I was there two thousand five to seven. So she was a batch ahead of me, and um, yeah, that's when we met. So yeah, know. the part that Kaushik forgets is that she reached out to me for career advice. Uh, hey, that is just wrong. That is just wrong. No, let me clarify. No. It's so convenient. She forgot it. Like, wait, wait, wait. Let me clarify. It, it is a practice in every business school that you uh, reach out to your quote-unquote senior batch for you know some yeah, advice on you know where to interview, what to, how to prepare your CV and resume. So mm-hmm. I had sent uh, you know reach out like I reach out to a dozen other people. So that's all there is to it. There's, I don't know if there's anything more to it. <laughs> oh my God! This all okay? Yeah. So so that's the story. That the, that's that's how we met. Okay. So from business advice to <laughs> now. <this. laughs> so business advice, business yeah, career advice yeah. Career advice, yes, yeah. Career advice, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, career advice, and then I started up in two thousand seven, and then Kaushik ended up starting up in two thousand eight. <laughs> so he took the advice very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know the the problem with the batch right was that they changed the definition of what was the exciting thing to do because when you enter business school, you think okay, you graduate with a you know great placement and a and a at that point in time it was one of the two like you know Bachchan they used to say you be a doctor and engineer those two aspirational. Basically, mm-hmm. you either become an investment banker or a consultant. So, mm-hmm. entering into the uh, that whole competitive rat race, you just felt like you have to get one of the two. Otherwise, it's going to be really tough. You're going to be disappointed. And thankfully, after summers, we both you know got placed in different investment banks. But their match, uh, there were a couple of them, very good, who uh, you know did not decline the offer and started up. And suddenly, it just seemed like such a new and novel thing to do. It was. Uh, It, it seemed it is a very exciting path to tread, um, and of course there was a lot of press and publicity around <laughs> that time because it was something unheard of. So yeah. in our batch, quite a few of us uh, got you know motivated that okay, this seems like a very cool thing to do. Of course, it's a different thing that the second batch that does that doesn't get one tenth the publicity about the novelty that they did, but it was still. I mean, so, I, but I, you I, did follow my career. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your career was how to make a CV apply, which I did. But this was different. This was, uh, you know, you. I mean, okay. To be fair, their batch showed us a different playbook yeah. that you can go ahead and try something of your own. And two thousand seven, Purita. Just imagine. I mean, your parents would think that somebody's brainwashed you, or you've not been able to get a job. They would. Yeah. I mean, my my. I'll give you an example. My mom, when I went to IIM, she told me that bad friends are there. You know what? My son's going to IIM. And every person she told, everybody came back for two years to ask her. So where is your son placed? And that time she would laugh at her because we were so it was things were very tricky back then. And mm-hmm. and yeah, you know, to your second question, when we start seeing each other, I think somewhere along the way, um, as we discussed a lot about career advice, as we have both said, there was a just a lot of old apps in terms of uh, music, the kind of books we read, and uh, yeah, we happened to be in this. Overlap of time and space where we were not seeing anybody else. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, what am I saying? This can't be. I have a feeling after this call, <laughs> no, 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 there's a lot of regret. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Because we had many. I knew it. We had many calls, many interviews, but these questions are very disarming, you know. <laughs> so, so yeah. So she moved out of campus, and uh, I was still there, and we kept chatting, and uh, so. Somewhere along the way, I think we started seeing each other. I, I think that's the right story. I mean, they got a back and forth. 
yeah i mean honestly it was just like uh, we had like you know from the time where we started talking to uh, deciding to date it wasn't too long maybe under 5 6 months but yeah like koshik said there was a lot of uh, overlapping things but the biggest was that we were both very clear that we want to be entrepreneurs at some point in our lives and build something and all our role models that we always discussed were like richard branson and steve jobs uh, um in fact uh, one of the first gifts that i got from koshik was like richard branson biography mm-hmm. so it was you know these were like that was one big uh, intersection and then of course music so uh, both of us used to listen to like a lot of kids in engineering college i guess a lot of rock so we actually within the first few months uh, decided to uh, travel to bangalore to attend an i am made in concert so that was another massive uh, uh, overlap and i think the third is just general your know, value system around working hard and you know uh, like being our parents proud and and like ambition combined with just gratitude for where we were in terms of having got through um one of the best business schools in campus and you know had the opportunity to be living in a very exciting uh, a century for india so i think all of that uh, uh, was a lot of common interest um for us and that's where i think we really hit it off more as friends uh, but we also started dating each other yeah as friends okay okay Yeah. And which which year it was when you got married? It was on eleven, two thousand eleven. Okay, okay. And two thousand eight is when you thought about uh, building something. So two thousand seven, uh, we started dating each other. Two thousand eleven, we got married. Two thousand twelve is when we started decided to build something together. Till mm-hmm. then, from two thousand seven to twelve, I was building another business with. Uh, some other co-founders uh, who were also from Ahmedabad and uh, Kaushik had uh, mm-hmm. built something else with uh, some other batchmates of it and then he joined McKinsey for a couple of years in between so yeah our overlap actually of you know doing a business together actually happened post marriage uh, till then because of the fact that you know we had like our own um, um, co-founders and our own you know business uh, plans and journeys going uh, that overlap had happened till then mm-hmm. Okay, okay. But was there any particular moment when both of you thought, okay, yes, together we can build it uh, as co-founders? I mean, we would make for great business partners as well. Uh, so I think the Dinita's uh, uh, previous thing it it ended on a very random note because uh, I think their four partners then went different ways, and there was just a lot of heartburn and um, unfinished business ish feeling over there, and. Uh, because we just you know we just got married in 2011 so 2012 seemed like the time when um we had some window so i, I would realize one thing uh, when your family and society knows that you're seeing each other they have just one question in the mind shall we go for her that's what they got <laughs> and and somehow i just felt that since we had checked that box matlab max to max 24 months ka gap milega then people will start asking the next question so we said we said time is very limited <laughs> precious if we have to start new thing now is the time so and and because she was moving out of a previous um, uh previous startup and it coincided with me completely two years at mckinsey uh, a lot of things just you know came together and we said okay you know what agar karna hai to you know this is you know the one other best move to do so that's when we decided to do it sure So, as co-founders in the starting itself, you were clear. Okay, yes, yes, this would be Vinita's role. This would be my role. How was it divided between the two of you at the starting of the journey? So, I, I think we made a conscious effort to uh, clarify. Uh, firstly, understand and acknowledge that both of us are going to have our opinion on everything because there was just two of us, and there was just so much to do. And mm-hmm. part of building it together is that you will co-build it. But there was something which I natively took. Um, more closely to uh, so things like marketing, things like tech, things like operations, uh, the e-commerce part of the business. So they rolled up to me. Uh, whereas things, everything about you know the product we used to create, uh, finance, uh, retail eventually. So you know all of that sourcing when it was you know part of family of previous business. So all of that rolled up to me. So we literally, I I think we've talked about this. There was this one you know flight we were taking, and we literally asked for a nap. One of those tissues from uh, the air hostess and took a pen, drew a line on the middle, and said, "I'm going to write these on this side. You're going to write those on this side." 
and we uh, always have the final word on this and over the last 12 years largely largely they have actually stayed the same some of some things have moved here and there but even today tech operations marketing they are going to be whereas retail finance product they can do the portfolio well yeah so i think it helped the fact that both of us had Guys, like I had worked with another co-founder for five years, and Koshik in his startup for about two to three years. And honestly, uh, Purina, while a lot of people talk about oh, you know, couple co-founder relationships being super complex, I think in general, uh, co-founder relationships where there's not a clear, um, you know, where there are peers, and there's no clear hierarchy. Like there are cases, of course, where a founder starts and then they get somebody on board uh, with a minority stake. Those relationships, I think. seem a lot easier but you know when you have like two peers coming in with an equal um um you know back, similar backgrounds and uh, with like you know equal stakes and like mm-hmm. you know, like matched personalities uh, there is always a lot of complexity in decision making conflict handling um and i think i think you know this is something that both koshik and i from our previous uh, co-founders uh had as a take away that it is very important to keep things super clear on day one um and you know really abide by it so that you don't end up uh spending a lot of time in decision making and arguing because at the end of the day there are certain decisions that are objective but a lot of things um, in startups because you don't have 100% information you have to operate with 70% 60% information in many cases and you have to take a call uh yeah. so a large role that intuition plays and there's a bit of subjective decision making that happens and in all of those cases if there is like a difference of opinion and you have to basically um, get every you know the other co-founder has a veto on everything then mm-hmm. things can really slow down and i think the one big thing that startups have over larger companies is the speed right so if your decision making gets slower because you're constantly belaboring every decision and you know and you also start then start taking conservative decisions saying that okay um you know like the launching this product i'll not be able to convince my co-founder because of uh, you know these challenges so then we not launch product right so you become risk averse you become slower and that is the death of a company so i think every co-founder relationship that experience and because we had that experience from our previous companies we came in here saying that okay this is what you are passionate about this is what i am passionate about this is what your strengths are my strengths and um that's you know di- like clearly divide these roles so that we don't step on each other's toes we have like freedom of making decisions and of course when we do things we are able to align and there are certain things that we have veto over but for everything else we are able to move faster with having that kind of clarity and i think that's been one of the most important uh, decisions because uh every people assume that this is it's really hard to make uh, co-founder partnerships work but actually if there is clarity in who gets to decide on what areas and there's mutual respect where you continue to believe that you know these are the things where my co-founder is better than me and which is why i should respect their intuition i think when that happens uh, it doesn't it's not as hard Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So, yeah. I mean, this is your thought now after working for twelve years together, or uh, I mean, uh, there was clarity <laughs> from the starting itself. I mean, uh, all went smooth. No, so I mean, we did have a lot of conflicts, and we still have. Uh, mm-hmm. It is not. Uh, I mean, it is like why there is a structure, and the structure honestly really helps that you know it just we sort of get to um, like move fast because of that. uh there are many things that we need to agree on um and in all of those decisions there will always be a lot of uh, back and forth and we are very different personalities in terms of uh, um you know how we operate and you know, you know the way we make decisions so uh, it is still hard but i think in the year one year two year three i think you know while we were still figuring it out there used to be a lot more um um i mean i think a lot of times the the problem happens that uh, you know the ego gets dragged into it and things are said which are become personal and you know there are like you know there can be personal attacks or if there is like um you know things that you sort of uh, regret um having said all of those i think in the first couple of years while we were just figuring this out 
uh, was much more and we would have sometimes show downs in office which were clearly stressed the rest of the team out uh, but um, i think over a period of time that you know just being a lot more professional about it being knowing how to keep our ego at the door uh, you know continuing to like sort of not react immediately or knowing when it is not the right time to continue engaging on an argument i think those we've sort of uh, both learned then i think one of the biggest the best thing that has happened is that uh, both slack and whatsapp now have a delete feature we use it yeah no i think i think i'll just add that in sure. the beginning when we were out to create uh, creating seemed like a very active process where you are work the one doing something whether it be uh, talking whether it be drawing sketching uh, you are always it's a very it seemed like an active active tense like today after telling you i know that there's a large part of creating that is passive listening that uh, absorbing whether it be listening to your co-founder or listening to your customer that clarity took me away that which is why initial days we wanted to get our voice heard um, you know couple of times and then we should have then it used to take time to resolve things but i think that's something which we have got a little better at so yeah we still have conflicts but uh, better at i think moving past them okay sure and uh, if i particularly talk about um, topics like money there are of course uh, at times difficult discussions whether a couple is talking about it in yeah. a personal space or a professional space So, how do you handle uh, difficult topics between the two of you? So, I think no, yeah, so yeah, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, yeah. So, I think you know, uh, for us, like our personal space, uh, money, which is a very complex topic for others, is actually something that somehow never been a, a you know. area of dispute because we both come from like very very um, you know middle class and uh, bringing where there weren't uh, there we there wasn't a lot of i mean we obviously had a great uh, very comfortable uh, uh, childhood uh, but it wasn't that there was like a lot of money uh, to spare or there was a lot of uh, discretionary spend that would happen so mm-hmm. i think and, and both of us in our first startup at least you know went through a lot of uh, uh, differential distress like i you know like i came to mumbai and like was able to draw 10000 rupees in my first startup and was by then was 5000 rupees and um, generally kaushik had raised a small round but it was still not enough to uh, you know make it work so i think our we when we started this business um our means were very basic and you know when we got married like really the biggest stress our both sets of parents had was that now like you know anyways they're not like at that well off and now they both put the you know eggs in the same basket so mm-hmm. like what's going to happen so much to our uh, parents um, agony i think uh, we we did not you know this wasn't we, we didn't have like a lot to a uh, fight over I mean, you have nothing then like you know you are like basically uh, in the trenches just looking at the stars and there's just no money that you can really fight over mm-hmm. so which is and and the i mean in the first many years of uh, the company as well uh, it was just like uh, you know uh, uh, there was there were a lot of struggles so uh, but so we kept on like i i think we didn't uh, have habits that were very opulent and that really helped because um if you suddenly go from having like a comfortable lifestyle to not having enough money then it seems stressful mm-hmm. but if you are organically um, you know your your income is growing your faster than what you spend then i think generally that stress doesn't happen and somehow that's how it happened in our personal life at least i don't think we ever um and and you know which is why we are very comfortable like you know contributing to various things jointly and you know having our own uh, ability to spend whatever we have or our own requirements and you know we we don't even i don't know what toshik bank account we uh, bank balance here you know mine we don't interfere with each other um so you know i i think it's it's been quite seamless for us personally uh business money of course like fund raising and how much left in the balance mm-hmm. that was very very stressful but luckily in that entire war 
the war against running out of cash and the war to raise capital we were on the same side of the table so it actually really united us and i think you know the part which people don't think about how being the co-founder helps your marriage is what you know this whole thing was i think I, you know every the all the controversy is always about like being co-founders impacts your marriage negatively because there's conflict and you know mm. there are things taken personally and yeah. you know personal disputes get taken to work and vice versa and all of that but i think the you know the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship is that it is so hard and there are so many times where you're really like uh, just like us against the world and mm-hmm. in those times you just come together as such a solid team and you know just you just develop like even if it were we want a couple you end up developing so much um, you know love and gratitude for your co-founder because you're just like like joint in this fight against like the odds and um, i i think that's it basically like you know that feeling of like chuck the india made them coming together <laughs> and you know we have a very big competitor that's how mm-hmm. we felt like a team right and um, i think that has probably something we don't talk about much but a massive impact on um, you know the kind of friendship and uh, partnership we have even in our personal life because there's a lot of trust and there's like a lot of going through really hard times together wala um good baggage that we now carry and um, i i think uh, uh, so yeah so in, in you know there was a lot of money stress mm-hmm. uh, it was like all about uh, you know us against like the like circumstances and which i think really got us together more than got us in getting us against each other okay nice yeah i i don't know what to add this <laughs> lot <laughs> But, uh, but the question was more about uh, I, i guess money yeah, yeah money or personal money I mean, which was uh, um uh, you know because when you started the i think it is start answering the personal bit i just my only only reflection is that see money is a means to uh, achieving or getting doing something and uh, the things which uh, we were passionate about getting or doing or experiencing were very different like um like for example if if travel or experiences a thing for me i mean uh, the joy at least the way we were brought up the joy of uh, going for a road trip to your nearest location uh, you know can be similar to you know, the joy you get out of taking a flight and going to a foreign location so similarly i mean i know from the earliest days one thing with me that you spend a lot of money on was a coffee and so there been so coffee is <laughs> constant i mean what has changed is sometimes the coffee would come from outside sometimes it would be you know people coming from abroad would get some subsidized coffee pods or something to make here but uh, so it, it you know i guess we've not had disagreements because um, we spend money on different things when we spend money and uh, mm-hmm. so i we've not had uh, the opportunity or time to think of a lot of these uh, people talk about estate planning people talk about where to invest it's mm-hmm. mostly not about it now but yeah maybe maybe it gets smarter over the next decade okay Yeah, I mean, we feel that our greatest wealth will come from what we are doing with sugar, and as long as we are really, really, you know, making sure that that goes well, I think uh, you know it's something we're not in a rush to uh, encash that uh, wealth and you know convert it to money. I mean, we're happy to uh, see sugar do well, and like you know, we have a comfortable. um you know like we are comfortable so we are not in a rush to see that um, wealth become liquid um, and and i think that's how we plan sure so uh, one thing i want to know from both of you i mean any particular uh, decision both of you remember that your spouse took I mean which actually helped the company grow and be where it is right now any anecdote you remember i i mean i'll give you the same thing because for me the answer just uh, and especially money related mm-hmm. <laughs> so there was a, a which hit me like a flash so there was a time with back in 2015 when we were really uh, just trying to make do get the company from one month to the other and at that mm-hmm. time because we were uh, aggressively looking at cutting costs uh, because you can either cut costs or earn more because earning more was a long way out because sugar was just just launched so one of the thing which i had proposed was uh, give up we had already given up our you know our warehouse and half our office So one of the things that was you know office bandi kar dete let's just all uh, you know operate from home and all that and uh, anyway the team says maybe you know less than 20 people and uh, i remember in one of the chat she had very 
you know vehemently argued that you know this is the one last thing i think we should hold to even if it is an office with just you know a couple of desks and a couple of chairs because that whole routine and discipline of getting up waking up and going to the office with a purpose that okay i have to do something and then you know winding down for the day coming back home i mean that's that that distinction that discipline uh, would not just in us in the extended whatever was left of the team would really help us stay focused on the purpose while we were doing this while we were trying to tighten our belt and i think at that time i mean initially it had struck me and it took me a while to appreciate that but looking back i think yeah that was the best decision we took because it just felt like uh, things were tough but we had still not completely thrown in the towel mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh, i think i think uh, in uh, in my case i would say that uh, my uh, previous company was completely bootstrapped and before i actually met koshik uh, my experience with fundraising was always like really challenging because i always felt like it was uh, um, you know uh, the, that whatever happens um, you know venture capitalists are not going to be interested in the um, you know consumer led businesses which so you know where women are the core customer because they don't they don't find it relatable uh, mm-hmm. or you know women founders i mean the timing hasn't come that uh, they have enough examples to think that women founders were so i you know would like was um i i i would give up very early on in all our fundraising conversations because then we you know be tempted to go back to the drawing board and say that okay how do we make our money last and you know build it slower but um you know in a way where we don't need to raise external capital because it's just so hard so um almost unpredictable uh, but i think you know that's one thing that because koshik had uh, raised some money in his first startup and he you know seen that it's not that like venture capitalists or vulture capitalists and you know there are good ones out there um, mm-hmm. i think this is one thing that he um, pushed from our first like when we even before sugar launched from the fab bag day saying that like you know consumer business um, having capital uh, is helpful in terms of being able to grow faster build market share and in hindsight i think you know without that kind of support that we had from uh india cushion a91 elevation uh, mm-hmm. all the investors that we've got on board in our journey um i think you know we wouldn't have been able to build sugar the way it has been uh, there was like both in terms of just strategic input as well as obviously the uh, financial cushion um it was very very uh, critical to our journey and i uh, you know like without that push from gorshik that it is important to raise early enough and it is important to raise as much as you can Uh, so that um, you know you can continue to focus even in tougher years on uh, growth i think that um, was like a very fundamental decision um, which in hindsight i'm very grateful for because i you know that was one thing that i didn't know how to do and i was very scared of doing honestly okay lovely yeah yeah so sure. and now uh, vidita i see you as an investor also you have invested in uh, some uh, Uh, ventures where and of course uh, the couples are uh, together running it for example yeah. zook and couple of more so yeah. when you uh, interact with such uh, founders who are again a couple like you i mean uh, is there a particular thing which you look at or any learning that you have had by working with such kind of founders so um i mean zook and all and we jointly do these investments so both koshik and i have uh, invested in zook as well mm-hmm. uh, and uh, i think um there's i mean uh, like in our own journey i think uh, our realization was that uh, um there's like you know earlier on people used to talk about relationship risk that what if the um, you know this relationship becomes a a barrier to that co-founder relationship and not vice versa mm-hmm. and um, i you know even if you like factor some of that um in my experience from our journey and from all the other stories uh, mm-hmm. there is because of the just fundamentally you know women and men bring their own traits to the table and you know just the kind of trust that a couple have 
um, on each other in terms of not having to second guess and you know feeling like somebody um, uh, really took away the business in a direction that they didn't want to do you know fundamental trust not just about money but about value system principles because that is so high i personally feel that uh, couples do make a great team as far as uh, uh, startups are concerned Mm-hmm. and um there is you know like there are specifically in case of consumer brands i feel that a lot of like zoo is it's a brand for women and i do feel that there is a, a lot of nuance in consumer understanding that um disha brings to the table and you know pradeep brings the um the you know e-commerce and the like his interest in uh, building tech so i think you know this sort of a complementary skill set i've seen in a lot of couples and i do feel that um there is i mean it is one of those um the co-founder relationship that investors really um refuse to consider till eight years back and mm-hmm. i feel d to c brands and not just us but a lot of the other brands have changed that and i feel that if you look at like the top 100 d to c brands you will find probably i don't know the numbers but maybe you'll find up to 30% couples and that's awesome because i feel that you know it is sort of it validates something that we experienced um personally as well and you know the challenge which investors used to see was around building teams that you know couples will sort of run it like a family business and they'll not delegate they'll not be able to hire great people mm-hmm. and i think that's the one thing that i would as an investor look at very early on saying that yes it's a couple uh, relationship as co-founders so it is technically a family business by that technical definition but yeah. are they running it like one or are they running it like a professional business where um, you know the co-founders are there because of their merit and not just because they are married to each other and the leadership respects both the co-founders uh, the leadership is given enough authority decision making freedom uh, because at the end of the day great businesses are built around execution execution comes from great teams so yeah. if they i see early signs which were there in a lot of these successful brands of a second layer of leadership that is mm-hmm. empowered as well as that is high quality and that the, the um, leadership has respect for both co-founders i feel that you know there is an unmatchable as an unmatchable pair as far as the co-founder relationship is concerned so sure. and uh, while both of you were raising money in the start I mean, were there questions being raised to the two of you as a couple and how did you handle them when we did and i remember both of us sitting in a meeting in 2012 and one of the investors telling us um yeah i think your business could be interesting uh, we are considering a term sheet but uh, we can give you the term sheet once uh, you know koshik has resigned from his uh, you know current <laughs> job <laughs> because we want to make sure you want to come in full time i was like okay mm-hmm. i mean not that i was not like the resign but okay fine you're fast tracking this so yeah, and the serious marky funds that categorically pass on us because they don't do couple mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah and it was a stated uh, policy and it was a stated feedback that we got that we don't invest in couple founders period so i mean i'm sure all of these cases where you know women don't get funded couples don't get funded there are stories uh which lead them to make these sweeping uh policies where you know some case happened where i was explicitly told by an investor once that you know there was a founder woman founder who i invested in and then she decided to have a family stop focusing on business and you know my money went out and my question always is that sample set of one i mean in any kind of you know to build any kind of hypothesis you at least need a statistically significant number which is probably at least 30 cases where something like that happens before you make a decision that you know it is a gender issue or a um your know, co-founder relationship issue and Absolutely. i think that happened in our case because you know when we started 2012 uh, the vc ecosystem was still young and there were very few funds so you know one or two cases if they had like an issue where a uh, couple did not work out for various reasons um they would sort of blacklist the idea of investing in couples all together uh, mm-hmm. but luckily i think in the last a uh, uh, few years because of all these you know amazing brands that have emerged uh, run by uh, couples i think at least you know these stated policies etc have gone uh, and, and there is still like you know honestly a lot of uh, 
a question that is raised um, if not openly then you know secretly around relationship risk and all of that and i don't think um, you know one can change mindset but the fact that people are not talking about it openly and about the fear of being judged i think that is great progress and i think you cover all of it yeah mm-hmm. sure and uh, vinita and kaushik uh, for both of you i mean uh, of course uh, as a startup uh, you have seen and you have grown up i mean uh, the business and uh, of course uh, from the time you started to now after 10 12 years uh, it's a different uh, ecosystem altogether and uh, while you were building the business uh, you i might uh, might at times have haven't known a lot of rules of the game so i mean uh, were there any rules you would play by or uh, i mean uh, is there a specific uh say i would say uh, i mean uh, a theme which would uh, rule the way you would operate the business um yes yes but i don't i don't think it's a been a one way change i think what's what 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 goes up comes down it's it's been that sort of evolution which is it's a yeah. sign of industry maturing for example one thing that comes to mind is that when we um, started uh, talking to investors about our business we would often uh, you know just lay out a business plan like the business plan was that we are going to do this one we got this much they were very really realistic plans and we never got funded we got uh, uh, you know derided at times saying that you know you're not dreaming big enough and this is for that there is a thin line beyond which being aggressive changes into become you know being um, you know uh, inauthentic about what you're actually going to do Yeah. but there was a time in the middle where so many uh, startups just came and raised a lot of money based on pure storytelling and a very large scale vision painting so and i remember there were times when we used to you know look at it from the sides and wonder that you know okay is that the rule of the game uh, you know we have to you know throw out big numbers talk about market size and talk about how we're going to everything we do has to change the world so it was a it took us a while to accept that and uh, so then you know we started uh, storytelling a bit but you know thankfully today if you look at how the markets evolved uh, it's come back to grass stacks where people are talking about okay it doesn't even forget gmv people are not even looking at <laughs> the revenue now people are saying you know what is your does your business make money is the mm-hmm. business that's uh, sustainable so i think that's a that's the, you know we come full circle that's a sign of you know the investing maturing and i i mean uh, i mean some of these things have been learnings along the way tam for example i mean we used to always think that you know i need people to buy what i'm creating to make a business the most important part we left out of the sentence the most important part is i need a lot of people to buy <laughs> what we are creating and that uh, target addressable market like who is the, what is the market size a lot of to be fair to give credit to some of the investors some of the venture fund they did tell us that you know uh, you got to think of a much larger market than the beauty subscription business we had initially started with and we didn't appreciate that there and then uh, i mean that time we used to feel that i used to feel that somebody was just you know telling us you know nahi ho payega and uh, we were like no 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 karke dikhayenge but i mean it's it's beyond the point now that i look back we realize that in a growing market you it, it is so much more easy you have limited time energy and resources so focus on not fighting market forces but rather than that riding the wave and making the most of the market opportunity there right? that's the learning which uh, this is yeah. the which i would import yeah and i i think the other thing that we would add is that uh, you know on my desk there's a book uh, which we published uh, the second series of which is called fail forward uh, i think um, you know we like in our journey uh, honestly in the last uh, 15 16 years of building trying to build a startup um we failed more, way more number of times than we did like 10x more times and uh, the only learning we have is that like the um the only thing guaranteed when you're building something you know new uh, is that you're going to fail a lot um and company wide now we have this culture of experimentation and failures where we publish books of different colleagues failing in whatever they tried and you know we glorify it because mm-hmm. the fact that uh i think just culturally uh, undoing the uh, upbringing in india where failure is considered to be taboo uh, takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, uh, mindset shift and i think we've been on it for the last uh, many years and it's really helped because i think we've been able to build a culture 
of mm-hmm. failing forward which means expect failures um, and you know continue experimentation don't be scared of them uh, because there's a lot that you can learn from them so i think that that's another one that i would add and uh, i think one last one i would add is that uh, you realize that um startup take many many decades to build and um, if you want to be in it for decades um, and not going to give up uh, then it's important that you have fun so work with like really good people um have fun in what you're doing and do something that you're genuinely passionate about and we, that's what we do i mean we really um trying to build a team which is just inspired uh, passionate um, you know people that we love to hang out with even mm-hmm. otherwise and i think that really helps because uh, um it's at, at the end of the day businesses do take a lot of uh, patience and many many years of compounding uh, but compounding is powerful like you know 20% growth over 10 years is also Uh, six times growth so i think uh, sometimes we underestimate also how much we can create in you know decades by just staying at it and that's what we're trying to do okay great and uh, lastly i want to know i mean uh, which moment you think has been uh, the hardest part of the journey for both of you while building it together uh all the near death experiences i think <laughs> and we've had like i don't know how many like five six different ones <laughs> and at every point of time in a startup journey you think bas ab ho gaya like you know uh, somebody was giving this analogy that you're like acha hai main iit kar liya to bas my life is set and then you're like no mm-hmm. i'm too like a business school agar ye kar liya if i get this job my life is set uh, but it doesn't ever happen uh, similarly in a startup i think you're every you know you're like okay after i cross 100 crore i'm never going to have another then that's what we had happened to us when covid happened right we went to we crossed 100 crore did the mega celebration Uh, hmm. across the board and then boom down to zero crore revenue in april 2020 hmm. uh, and uh, that was you know probably our fourth uh, or fifth near death experience uh, but i think the hardest one was the pivot because it was very lonely back then uh, by you know when we decided to pivot from fat back to sugar uh, we literally had like like in the last 25 30 lakh in our bank account which we had to keep aside because we had to uh, refund the subscriptions of consumers we taken money from so we were actually down to almost zero bank balance and uh, uh, like there is when you're pivoting it's also very lonely and scary because whatever is right now working is going to has to be brought down to almost zero and then you try to um, you know put in efforts and energy behind something new uh, and at that time there was no example of a single consumer brand built out of india in the last mm-hmm. few years and there were no examples of uh, um, you know there being a possibility of even building a 100 crore brand in a few years um, in any category leave alone a category like cosmetics which was supposed to have like the largest uh, um, fmcg players in it uh, so i think every single person that was advising us at that point of time you know said that this is impossible to do so imagine like sort of putting an end to something that's working to an extent uh, with no money in your account left and then trying to do something which everybody called impossible uh, but somehow i think those those were really hard days because um, it was impossible to raise capital it was very hard to even retain our team because uh, you know they were working for no increments for like a couple of years uh, and like koshik said you're making dramatic decisions like you know shrinking our office shrinking our warehouse and just trying to make that extend the runway and uh, but yeah i mean from all of that pain sugar was born so it was also like beautiful that's how the result is super sweet <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a time in the middle when we had this very heated argument about in 2015 i said you know what i need to leave and i'm going to move out and i'm going to take up a job so that there is some sustenance money coming in we should continue onwards as if we were to show that and there was this big disagreement i i mean that is one of the most uh, i think vulnerable phases uh, arguments we had but yeah i as i said i'm very very grateful that it worked out okay sure and uh, before we conclude uh, tell me who has the veto power between the two of you
yeah no i think that uh, we you know defined when it comes to like product um, you know offline other areas that i handle i have the veto power when it comes to uh, brand and marketing kaushik has the veto power uh, but we rarely end up using our veto powers i think we end up mm, like yes. really taking in each other's uh, opinion very seriously even though we know that okay in this area my decision final but uh, you know whenever something is critical you know at least we try to get the other person's uh, buy in and we also know that even if we don't have each other's buy in uh, we would be um, we would be excited about seeing the person uh, and we leave the ego at the door and not try to you know make sure that we derail this experiment just because um, we had this one of us had disagreed on it So I think that sort of maturity you end up developing over a period of time. Yeah. Okay. So sure. and now going forward, I mean, uh, the vision for both of you is to take the company public, is it? Eventually, yes. I, I think uh, we've had very. I mean, we've matured in this regard. I mean, when we started the company, I know I thought that you know, three years, four years, maybe. I don't know. I know that now we have two things. One, it takes a lot to so IPO. Two people who have gone public, they don't seem to be too happy. They uh-huh. <laughs> seem to be under this uh, hamster wheel of quarterly reporting and also yes. take a bit of our time in getting there. So most, I mean, we publicly said about two to three years, but uh, yeah, we're in twenty twenty four, so maybe twenty twenty seven. Yeah, and I think I mean that's like another one of those steps in the way we realize that it's like a milestone, but it's not like the end goal. I think we are trying to build um, India's largest and most favorite beauty personal care uh, uh, business, mm-hmm. and I think that is like that trumps everything else. So yeah, if the IPO is an important milestone in that journey, then so be it. But it doesn't end there. At least for Kashik and me, I think we are going to be. Staying invested in this business for the next like many many decades till we um, exist, I guess. So I, I think for us it's just uh, one more of those fundraising rounds rather than the end goal, so to say. And uh, we do look forward to building India's largest beauty personal care business. Okay, wonderful. On that note, uh, I conclude this and uh, thank you so much for being candid enough and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vinita. It was fun. Thank you, Vinita. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. All, All right. right. Bye. Thank you, Vinita. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Bye.